the title Ships, Mountains, and the Sea echoes a line in a, in a, po a Greek poem uh, by um, Elitis, which is very inspiring. So in a sense, it is a continuation. Um, it's also uh, an attempt to uh, try, try new things based on uh, imagery that has inspired me back, when I'm back uh, 20 years ago. I first got here in the um, early, early 90s, like 91, 92, and I was just, to, be, to use a technical term, blown away by the incredible landscape of the uh, Spanish banks, uh, Jericho Beach, the mountains, the freighters, the uh, windsurfers then, it was before kite surfers, the, the, the little seaplanes. It just was superbly gorgeous, mm -hmm. and I wanted to paint it. The title, Ships, Mountains, and the Sea, echoes a line in a, in a, po a Greek poem uh, by um, Elitis which is very inspiring. It encapsulates and gives me also a freedom. I can put almost anything that I'm seeing in the landscape here into an exhibit that says ships, mountains, and the sea. The weather, the light changes here from second to second. And so I learned that it's impossible. I've, well, I, I've done watercolor here, but usually in the summer when it's consistent, and uh, so, but the, the acrylics are all studio paintings mm -hmm. and they're all informed by photographs that I've taken. And so I'll take 100 photographs or 300 photographs in a morning, print them out as, as little photos and I'll staple them together. So I'll have like a um, David Hockney uh, collage, uh, some z zoomed in and some far away, some details from all the way over there. I've moved, I've moved, uh, 800-year-old spruces from the southern side of Mount Baker to the north. Um, and my paintings start with a drawing, just a, it's very, very quickly done with pencil as if I was in the space. Uh, along, it looks along the lines of what my pen and ink drawings were, but there's often a foreground, some, some, some sort of a structure or form in the foreground, and then you're looking through at this color, this light, and it's that that it inspires. And it's that juxtaposition of a strong form and then the looking between, the secret glimpse between, you know, in the alleyway or between the branches of the trees or between the trunks of the trees. That catches me every time. The way I avoid uh, painter's block mm -hmm. is to, whenever I've paused in painting, even for a, a week or two, I start new paintings. And so, um, and I then come back to them, and then I have the courage to then play with paintings that look really quite good but aren't finished. Uh, so at the, any, moment, any one time, I have uh, paintings that are done and have been exhibited, but I also have a whole bunch of paintings that didn't quite get done in time for the show, and they may not ever get into a show, or they may wait it now for 15 years before they got into the show because I've moved on to different subjects and there isn't enough to have an exhibit. Okay. And so I'm actually consciously gonna go back, look at what worked and what didn't work in the, in the say, the Ships with Worn Surfers series, mm -hmm. and go, hmm, I wanna make that bigger or that grander, or, or not do that at all this time. I want to play over here. And, and so 
yeah, I'm, I'm quite excited to find out what I come up with because I don't know what I want to do, but I do know I want to do it. I do try to add some gestural aspect or, and the form has to be such as to trigger both emotion and physicality. Uh, that there has to be some aspect of, the, of either the color or the texture or combination that triggers emotion. Um, and uh, yeah, it, uh, that would be good. <laughs>